came to know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior in 1957 when I was in the service. For about a year, I grew in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, and it was a blessed time. But although he was my Savior, I never came to the place where I completely allowed him to become Lord of all. And that's a dangerous position to be in. He'll either be Lord of all or Lord not at all eventually. And that's what happened to me. I began to drift away from the Lord after coming out of the service. And as I drifted away from the Lord, inwardly the guilt built up, the self-condemnation built up, a burden began to press heavier and heavier upon me. And in this backslidden state, I came to Asbury as a student, went through three years here, graduated, left here, eventually went to graduate school, and eventually came back on the other side of the death, still in a backslidden state, no longer having a living union with Jesus Christ, no longer having anything that was fresh and vital from the Lord day after day, living on past experience, living on past spiritual insights. In other words, in good biblical language, I was a hypocrite. And the guilt continued to build up, and the condemnation continued to build up. And it was heavy. And then God came down on February 3rd. And I knew God was here. And in spite of my backslidden state, I still sensed that he was here, and I even rejoiced on occasion. But at night, in my office, I'd pray and seek the Lord because I knew I wasn't right. I didn't have the courage to admit it before the student body and before my fellow faculty members. And until we humble ourselves, God can't do much for us. And God dealt with me for an entire week. And a week later, on February the 10th, the following Tuesday, God gave me the grace, and I thank him for it. He gave me the grace to acknowledge my sin and hypocrisy before this body. And I thank him for it because when he... He gave me the grace to humble myself and acknowledge my need. He met that need. And he took the guilt away and the self-condemnation away and the burden away and replaced it with a peace and a joy and a presence that I don't want to lose again. And I praise him for it. Great things he has done and is doing and is going to do as we obey and follow the Lord. You see, when you get a, when you get a doctorate, in Bible, who will stand up in front of a whole student body and look at his students and say, I have a confession to make. I have cheated you, students, because I have not properly prepared for my classes. And I've gone into classes not as well prepared as I should be, and I stand here today to ask you to forgive me. Now, I count that as revival. It was interesting. That man's life was transformed. Doctrine in Bible. His life was transformed, and he would share that with you. And for years after, you, you could tell a freshness and a sweetness and the presence of God in his life in a, in a, in a very beautiful way. Now, that's the way God moved through that week. The interesting thing, one of the interesting things to me was that by Friday, when I returned, the word had spread all across the country. In fact, before that week was out, one of our students was on the West Coast, and maybe been more, but I know at least one was on the West Coast sharing in a, in a, in a, in a Christian college what happened. Another student was on the East Coast. We, that weekend, after it began on Tuesday, our students were all over the United States and in Canada. Now, what I thought was that God had turned something over in their souls, and it had been so good that they knew they had to share it, and so they scattered out across the United States to share it, going back to their homes and so forth. Now, that was partially true. What was more impressive was that by Thursday, we began to get calls from all over the United States and from Canada saying, we'll be glad to pay the way for a group of students if you'll send a group of students up to share with us what's taking place there. And so there were students in Canada, there were students, as I said, from the East Coast to the West Coast and to the Gulf of Mexico. And they were speaking in places, witnessing in places, 
where no one from Asbury had sought an opportunity or taken the initiative, the Holy Spirit was at work at the other end in hunger, and people were saying, well, somebody come tell us about it. Now, one of the most beautiful things and impressive things to me was the way the Spirit worked. There was no preaching through any of that eight days. It was only sharing, witnessing. And the amazing thing was that as a person would tell what had happened, it would be recapitulated. As a person would go somewhere and tell what God had done in his auditorium, it would take place in the church where the person was telling it. I have a friend who now is a Church of the Nazarene district superintendent. At that time, he was the pastor of one of the college churches in the Church of the Nazarene. He was in revival, and he had an evangelist, and he had a quartet that was singing that night, and their service was on the radio. At about 12 minutes of eight or a quarter of eight, one of his ushers came to him and said, uh, Dr. Irwin, there are two students out here from Asbury College, and they say they want to talk with you. They say a revival has broken out at Asbury. And he said, oh. So, he said, bring them in. So they came in, and here Don stood with his evangelist in the quartet. And uh, these, he looked at these two students. He said they weren't very impressive looking. But there they stood and looked at him, and he said, yes. And they said, we're from Asbury College. God has come to Asbury, and he told us to come tell you that he'd come to Asbury and that he wanted to come to your college. And that was all they said. And he said, oh, well, that's wonderful. What do you want to do? And somewhere or other, the idea was suggested that they share in the evening service. He'd never laid eyes on these two boys before. He was not about to turn his pulpit over to them. He didn't know what they would do. And so they said, oh, that's not our problem. Our problem was to do what he told us to do, and we've done it, and we're clean. He said, well, maybe you should tell about it. Could you do it in five minutes? Oh, they said, we don't have to do it. We've done what we were told to do. He said, let's take five minutes. So they sang a number, and these, he introduced the first student and said, we have two students here tonight from Asbury College. They tell us that God has come to the campus of Asbury College, and they want to tell us about it. So one of these boys, he said, they took their coats off and were there in their shirt sleeves, and he said, that was sort of offensive to me. You can remember that was 1970. But he said, nevertheless, he said, the first one, stood up and simply said, in, tu in chapel on Tuesday, the Holy Spirit came to Asbury campus. He touched our hearts, our lives. We're different. Our campus is different. And we've just come to tell you what he's done for us. And he sat down. Don told me, he said, it may have taken him a minute and 40 seconds. The second guy stood up. And in less than, I think, maybe four minutes, both of them had finished what they were going to say. And Don, the pastor, said to me, I sighed with relief and said, well, that's over with. Unless you're a preacher, you don't understand that. But if you're a preacher, you understand that. So he said, now we can get on with the service. So they introduced the quartet. The quartet sang one verse. And when they got ready to sing the before they could move into the second verse, the bass in the quartet, if I remember correctly, one of the quartet members, stopped, raised his hand and stopped him and said, God has spoken to me. I need him to do for me what those guys say he's done for them. He walked down out of the pulpit, left his quartet, got down on his knees at the altar, and at 10 o'clock that night, there were more people in that church than there were at 8. And revival ran through the night. It was almost the less impressive the student was, the more effective an instrument he was. 